Good morning, everybody. We are celebrating International Women's Day today, surrounding ourselves with strong and powerful women, speaking to their challenges, triumphs, and lessons. Joining us now are three very influential women. Very today. influential. Welcome, 14 year old blogger and activist as well, Hannah Alper, is here. Our very own city news reporter, Janella Massa, and representing the Office of Sexual Violence Support and Education at Ryerson University, Farah Khan. Thank you so much, all of you, for Good morning, joining us. Good morning, ladies. Thanks for having us. Where do we begin? Talk about some of the challenges and obstacles you've overcome to be sitting on this couch today. <laughs> That's casual. a big question. <laughs> Farah, uh, you've been talking, you've been an advocate for women for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Now, in lieu of all things, hashtag me two times up. Yeah. Do you see it going even further to help educate men and women to stop violence? Oh, yeah, it has to go further. We have to go further until sexual violence isn't happening anymore. I want to lose my job. I'm not here to actually continue having the job to end sexual violence. It has to end. And so that means that we need to have those conversations and also recognize that it hurts women in their job, it hurts women in their education, and it hurts women in their family life when sexual violence happens. And so this is an ongoing struggle. Uh, Janella, I wanted to ask you, as well as a fellow reporter, you're be you being the first hijabi reporter in Canada, how, what was it like growing up and not being able to see anyone who looks like you but still aspire for that goal to becoming a first? Yeah, it was something that, you know, was always in the back of my mind that, you know, would it, could it really happen? Would people hire me? Um, and, you know, my mom it was, is a big inspiration, International Women's Day. I tweeted about my mom a couple weeks ago because uh, she, we just celebrated our 30th year in Canada. She came here. Uh, as a single mother with two girls, $100 in her pocket, barely spoke English. And so she was somebody who was always telling me, you know, to work hard, to look, you know, go after my dreams. If just because it hadn't been done before didn't mean that I couldn't be the first. So she was someone who was really inspiring. What are you me. hearing from viewers now? Because you have gone viral and made headlines across the world. What have you heard back? Um, people are really excited. They say it's about time. It's long overdue um, that, you know, in 20, this was in 2017 in Canada. Canada um, that our newscasts should look like our communities and so I think that that really is what's most important to me is is representation it's not just about optics it's not just about you know what I'm wearing but actually having our newsroom that is reflective of our city and that's what I think that you know I love about city news is that uh, they've always been kind of on the forefront of, of having our newscasts look like our city embracing diversity yeah. and reflecting our cultural mosaic Hannah you yes. just turned 15 yes okay talk to us here you are the super articulate and fun and confident 15 year old you're an eco warrior and activist where and how did you overcome the obstacles presented to you to have all of this confidence at your age? Yeah, so I mean, I started my blog when I was nine and motivational speaking when I was about nine or 10. And I faced a lot of obstacles from people saying, oh, you're too young, wait your turn, wait until you're an adult to make a difference. But no, my generation is making huge change in the world and we are creating huge waves of change. And I'm not going to stop just because I'm a girl or just because I'm a young person. In fact, I'm probably gonna go even further and so I have faced a lot of obstacles and a lot of skeptics but that's why I surround myself with positive people who support me for who I am for me being a young person and a young woman in the activist movement and I'm so proud to help represent that have you heard from other young women yes. who have heard you speak mm -hmm. and then say you know what I didn't think that I at this age would be able to do something like you're doing I mean my goal throughout my whole journey has been to inspire people to recognize that they have the power and the capacity to create positive change in the world, no matter what that means. And so I have received so much positive feedback from people saying, because of you, I now know that I can make a difference. And to me, that just means the entire world because that means that they have the power to go out there and take action. And that just means more change for the world. And that's really what we need right now. She's so inspiring. Hannah, when I was your age, I was a hot mess. I was thinking about <laughs> 902 on all the first time around. And I was, I don't know, comparing Look, myself to out. girls in high school. I was the odd one out. And here you are in the digital age of social media yes. where there's so many people getting access to you. Mm -hmm. There's trolls. How do you navigate through all that? Yeah, so I believe that it's a wonderful time to be alive with social media. And I personally really believe in social 
social media for social good. I only use my social media to talk about what I'm passionate about and we all need to do that. We all need to be positive on social media and talk about the issues and causes that we are passionate about. That's what we need. If this is our future, we are in incredibly <laughs> good hands. I'm so inspired. <laughs> I'm inspired by all three of you. Yes. Thank you so much. Stick around if you can. We'll be back with more BT on this International Women's Day. BT on